Welcome back and we are going green today on Point Blank. That's right, not environmental green but military green. Seems like this is going, making our some of viewers going a bit green in their faces because we've got some comments coming in. Uh, Singapore KPO says, oh, Singapore KPO says, it's great that we're upgrading our equipment, but every time I go back for ICT, I need to retrain for new gear. So how efficient can the soldier be if we're not fully familiar with all this high-tech stuff? Great question. And uh, in response to uh, what Dr. Lu was talking about just now, Nuji says, so calling air support is not like in the movies. You, have, you can laser target the bad guys and wait for <laughs> air support. Well, uh, you were mentioning that, you know, uh, that is changing as well in terms of air support. That's changing to a large extent. Um, this thing about lasing up a target um, um, mm -hmm. for, for air support to, to come in, that's basically a very carefully coordinated ex uh, mm -hmm. uh, operation that's going on. And typically mm -hmm. what, what that involves is uh, what we call special, special operations forces who have penetrated deep inside the enemy's yep. um, territory and they are going to highlight and they're going to light up as it were um, 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 very very high value critical sort of targets paint within, the targets with the laser the targets, right? yeah. yes. okay. yeah. which therefore means that by the time they get to a, a position where they can paint the, fly the boys are with the laser the flyboys are essentially waiting yeah. already N nine times out of ten um, especially if it's a very high altitude uh, platform um, the person has already released the munition and the munition is simply waiting for the laser to come and, 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 and light up the target that's all it's doing um, so it could very well be a gap, a, a, a time gap of say two minutes mm -hmm. between the time the platform has released its uh, its munition and the and the time the munition arrives at, at at its final destination. So in the interval, the special forces guys are just painting the target and just holding it steady there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yes, um, the other point about air support is that nine times out of ten, traditionally air support wasn't available mm -hmm. simply because air boys said. My job isn't to isn't to support a land uh, campaign. My job is to, well, look for the enemy's aircraft and destroy them. So in conventional strategy, uh, the forces are not so integrated. The land is land and sea is sea and air is air. Is that what you're saying? Traditionally, that was the right. case. Tradition Everyone was fighting their own war, basically. Traditionally, yeah. that was okay. the case, yeah. Uh, everybody was fighting their own wars and everybody had their own ideas as to what their jobs were. Let me give you, it, it goes back a little far back in history, but in the First World War, um, when Allied um, 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 shipping in the Atlantic started to be destroyed by German U-boats, um, Winston Churchill then, as the first, first Lord of the Admiralty, directed the Royal Navy to protect um, a merchant shipping in the Atlantic, arguing that without that merchant shipping, Great Britain would surely collapse. Mm -hmm. The Royal Navy's response at that point in time was, that's not my job. My job is, <laughs> my to, job find is not to protect enemy. my country. <laughs> my job is to find the enemy's navy and destroy him. My job isn't to protect merchant ships. Yeah. Winston Churchill basically said to the, admi to, to the Admiralty, it is your job, otherwise I'm going to find somebody else to take over who says it is his job. Uh, mm -hmm. And they said, yes, okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine, okay, fine. <laughs> um, some, some muscle there. <laughs> so traditionally, right, all the three services, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, had their own cultures, yeah, had right. their own perception of what their jobs were. Mm. And, and, and they didn't necessarily agree with one another. Yeah, yeah so it's interesting to note that in uh, our third gen philosophy, our vision mm. for Singapore, yeah. one of the key areas is integration. Integration. Yeah, so um, it's a way forward. Uh. And integration actually is a very, very difficult thing. The United States military required an act of Congress to force them to become integrated, whereas the Air Force, Army and Navy really didn't want to have anything to do with yep. each other. And it, when it finally came to the US Marine Corps, they looked at the other three services and thought they were all nuts. They said, what are you talking about? We've always been integrated, at least for the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. But for the Army, Navy and Air Force in the United States, no, it wasn't. They required an act of Congress to force them to <laughs> become integrated. Yeah, um, yeah. We fortunately are, 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 are nowhere as intransigent as that. Okay, mm -hmm. Marines are a different breed of soldiers because they train all well, on, in all in, in land, sea, and air, you know. So tra the traditional the, the traditional job of the Marines was basically this: um, I am going to seize the beachhead. For yeah. me to seize the beachhead, it simply means that I've got to be well. First of all, amphibious. I've got to rely on a, on, on on somebody from the navy to get me there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, um, I've always had air support um, 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 to to help me. So they've never had those problems of of yeah. Is my Air Force going to be supporting me? Is my Navy yep. going to be supporting me? Yeah. And the Air Force saying, 
am I really supporting them yeah. today? Um, they've never had those particular problems, at least not in the 20th century. Exactly. It was really the other services. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, Singapore, we are very young armed forces. Uh, we don't have the same level of high-bound organizational cultures that, say, the British arm, armed forces have, or the Americans, or, or, or even the Australians. Uh, we don't have that same in, uh, entrenched cultures within within yeah. the services. Yeah. So that's right. So when we say we want to go 3G, probably in, in from what you're saying, it's... It's a bit easier for Singapore to say we want to go integrated, and that's the and we know that you know the face of warfare is changing. That's also because urban war has gradually been on the rise worldwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah to me, yeah, the challenge is the, the Singapore Armed Forces has focused its attention to developing our soldiers for future urban operations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we will roll tape now and see uh, what we do uh, in the SAF now in the future SAF. <coughs> Urban military operations are increasing around the world and are growing in complexity. Singapore itself is an urban jungle, and to meet these new challenges, the SAF has developed the Advanced Combat Man System. To train the third generation soldier, the Army and the Defence Science and Technology Agency have jointly developed the Marai Urban Training Facility, or MUTF, located at the Lim Chu Kang Training Area and is built to resemble a typical town. MUTF is an instrumental township that can accommodate combined arms exercises up to a battalion level. The training facility is made up of various urban districts to challenge and train soldiers in different operating urban environments. MUTF consists of an industrial area consisting of warehouses, an old town consisting of disorganized buildings haphazardly laid out, a new town of organized buildings laid out parallel to each other, and finally, a residential area. With an attention to realism, the facility also has a mock mall, hotel, shops and shop houses, as well as overhead bridges and bus stops. The MUTF training instrumentation supplements the SAS existing battlefield instrumentation system. The BFI only monitors troops when they are out in the open, while the MUTF training instrumentation has an indoor tracking system to monitor troops when they enter buildings. The facility can accommodate live firing exercises too. I asked Section Leader First Sergeant Desmond Sung to tell us how his team works when tackling a room full of enemies. Firstly, uh, my team is, uh, consists of three persons. Okay? Okay. From here, I won't expose all my, my two teams out. Okay? The first team uh, consists of three guys. Mm -hmm. The first guy, they will scan around the corner, come here. Okay? Then one guy will uh, secure the, this window okay. to ensure there's no enemy inside. Okay. Okay? Then the, the second guy will come to here. Then the take, uh, maybe they will look, look one grenade in to confirm there's no enemy. Okay. So once confirmed, okay, all, all the Corner blind, the blind spots. Oh, blind spots. Yeah. Oh, what are the blind spots in this room? Okay, once once you turn in, uh, the first first thing is just this. Because there might be people here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So they have to clear this side. They, they, the they call this the fatal funnel, right? Yeah. In CQB. Okay. Then once the, the second guy will go in and just stand here. So because this, is, this blind spot. yeah, and... Due to the manpower issue, so we, we can't proceed on. So I have to call my second team to carry on forward. So you come here and then you secure the area. Once clear, then they will come. Yeah, I will call my okay. team two to come proceed forward. Okay.
Yeah. There you go. Mission yeah, accomplished. That, that could have been my office. That could have been my flat. Exactly. Could have been us. And very highly relevant for Singapore. I mean, we are a cosmopolitan city. Well, one thing, if we, if we note that these guys, our soldiers in green, were actually wearing the new uniforms, weren't they? That is right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's take a take a look at the web comments. So someone who noticed the same thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Somebody who is fashion conscious, <laughs> who's a maybe a jabo, <laughs> from jabo point, point of view, view, how good is our new digital camouflage in an urban environment? Do we have an urban color like the Americans do? He, uh, Cervantes thinks that if you're going to stand, you're be, going to be out of the jungle and use and be in your green uniform, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. So what do you say, Doctor Lu? Um, there is no urban color f uh, for for for. For military mm -hmm. uniforms, what mm -hmm. you what the Americans basically have is um, color coding for for, for for different types of, of environments that they plan to fight. The green, which is more for a more conventional, yeah. either jungle or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or open terrain uh, kind of military operation. Then they have um, what is essentially khaki mm -hmm. for desert uh, kinds of operations. And then finally white, which is essentially for Arctic. Um, those are the three. They have like night ops, camo and... Um, well, night operations, in as much as your enemy does not have any lighting, um, it really doesn't matter what yeah. you're wearing. Just You'll be wearing like a fire and no one cares. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, unless, of course, and, e and even, if you're, even if your enemy has night vision devices, it simply means that there is no such thing as camouflage then. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. your enemy will... That's true. It's, it's, it's your body's heat signature that will, that will register. Yep. Um, so it doesn't really matter then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what color we wear at night. But uh, how about this bright green? In, in, in like, if you're standing in front of a white building and you're wearing this white green, yeah. wouldn't you be like the source of? I'm know, sure like, if if war off. comes to Singapore, Singapore has contingency plans of, of of putting out like like you know camouflage which will fit our urban background. You know, our but urban right jungle. now there's, there isn't anything like that um, yet, right? What exactly is our urban background? What is I don't know. Yeah. What I don't exactly? know. I hate to be fair, multicolored. I hate to be getting more and more colorful from brown to base to orange. I think there's some like an urban in, environment yeah. because this like green camouflage uniform is more made for like jungle warfare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole point of camouflage is really so that you begin to blend in with a yeah. broken background. Yeah. Um, and an, an urban environment is not a broken background. Yes. It's, it's really a very leaves, linear. Um, yeah. um, um, trees yeah, and yeah. grass. That's what we mean yeah. by, by a broken background, right? And, 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 and the camouflage is simply designed to allow you to blend in easier in that kind of background. In an mm. urban environment, camouflage really doesn't matter any longer. Um, it's it, 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 it's it's cover that you want. It's not concealment any longer yep. that you, that's right. that you exactly. want. That's right. Okay, and to find out more, let's take a look at our boys in green in action in the city. Okay, um, so I don't want to be there where the thing is so pointing. This, so this view is actually is actually like an overview of, of the whole uh, training facility. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, is that the, is the is the yeah. coloured smoke supposed to be enemy presence? The coloured yeah, smoke is meant to is, is meant to announce to everybody else on your own side that oh. yes, we've spotted and we've spotted enemy, and then this is mm. this is basically a hot zone now. Okay. Um, a, a, approach with caution. Therefore. So signal smoke, all right? Okay, so that's so the air force the, coming in. The air support. Mm -hmm. uh, um, on the assumption that you do not have ground-based fire support, then you then you want to be able to call on air platforms to be able to de deliver hopefully as accurate munitions as possible right. uh, uh, um, against the enemy. Okay, so it's interesting that uh, they first send in the air support, yeah, and then the ground troops. Yeah, then the ground troops uh, so close in. So what's on the, the enemy? Uh, are the air support more more like uh, just to do sort of like a. A blanketing effect where it's not really precise, or um, are they more precise now? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Before the troops, increasingly in. they are more precise. Increasingly, but you also have to remember that a precision weapon is a very expensive piece of machinery. Yep. Uh, um, a tomahawk missile, for instance, costs about costs several millions of U U.S. dollars. Do you then want to? Do you then want to use that? Uh, a piece of equipment that's costing you several millions of dollars uh, on on a target as, such as this, chances are no. Um, so it, it therefore means that what you're going to be more likely relying upon is 
what in the, what we call dumb bombs, yeah. uh, as opposed to smart weapons, right? Um, these are just gravity bombs, and, and and the whole idea is really to provide some sort of shock effect against your opponent, so that um, he doesn't have time to recover before you actually launch your, your before you actually launch your ground forces into the area. Uh, I think the, the smartest idea. the smartest dumb bomb would be like a napalm bomb. Don't you think? Because it just co- it just covers everybody. Just kills everyone. It just co- it kills area. everything. Trees, everything. That's true. Yeah, it's true, right? Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, I mean, well, you'd, you'd have to be smart with all the, yeah, the technology. So, one man is down. And they're trying to get Dragon some safety. help here. Yeah. Well, I think that's an important part of training. Yes. Uh, what all this actually hi- begins to highlight mm-hmm. is the fundamental difficulty of um, um, military operations in an urban environment. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got so many buildings, and more often than not, you are not you are able to, to tell very quickly where your opponent is within exactly. that mass of buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if you know which building your opponent is in, can you then um, determine exactly which room he, he or she is in? Um, all it really takes is for one soldier in one room, in one building, to slow you down significantly. Yeah. Definitely, and you need significant time and, 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 and skill to navigate to where that dude is and to, you yeah. know, to take him down as well. Yeah. A lot of time needed to... So it's not just like uh, you know, going across the field. You have to go up and you have to go around yeah. and all that, right? The other thing that's... Um, and I suspect this is sort of inadvertent more than uh, uh, more than uh, uh, designed into the exercise. Um, you see the cameraman around, chances are in an urban environment, you're going to have very, very pesky people around, civilians. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you're going to have um, 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 reporters, the press, exactly, the media. Exactly. Um, and all these things ultimately will, um, uh, will be things that you as a, as a soldier... Mm. These are things which you have to take into consideration. You cannot just ignore them. You cannot just. Sh- the last thing you want to do is to shoot at a mm. journalist. That's true. Yeah, the last thing you want to do <laughs> is shoot at a journalist. Yeah, that's right. It's very true. <laughs> the, the last, the, the last uh, form of realism that the Murai training facility actually just can't have uh, every day, twenty four seven, is public. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But it's very, very difficult, and it, it's it's very difficult to discern sometimes in a time of you know panic and if you're under fire to to. Listen, or who's civilian and who's not, and, and, and all that. True. If you're lucky, your opponent is somebody who respects the laws of war with mm. regards to combatants versus non combatants, civilians versus soldiers. Um, if you're really lucky, your opponent not only respects that, but he also takes the trouble to dress differently from everybody else. Hopefully like he shows soldier. up in orange. Yeah. Hopefully he shows up in at least his uniform, right? But would anyone do that? I mean, orange. I mean, you would turn it to your advantage if you were in war, right? If you're really unlucky, that's exactly what your opponent is going to do. If he's going to try to merge into yeah, the environment, he's going to try to blend in. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Back in, back in the Chinese Civil War, Mao Zedong said... Um, the relationship between the gorilla and the population is like a fish to water. The water p- sustains the fish. The water, mm. but but the, but the the population also provides the gorilla with hiding places. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they provide them with food. They provide them with mm. well recruits, and all these things are very very important. Yeah. Um, well, okay. In our video, uh, the Apache choppers have come in, so uh, more reinforcements. But uh, if they were navigating within a building, such choppers and tanks, what's their, what's their role in, 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 in this part of, uh, of combat? The Apache helicopter is basically a very, very large machine gun mounted on a fairly stable air platform. Fairly stable. <laughs> um, that's, going to be, that's going to bring a whole lot of metal to the scene. Mm. Um, um, it's meant as really close air support. Uh, the Apache was basically designed, first of all, as a tank killer. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 yeah, they call it the flying tank, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. um, okay. And its purpose was really to target and destroy enemy tank platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, but over the years, they found that it's, it, it's got great value in urban environments as well because it's a relatively stable platform and given the amount of firepower that Apaches have, you can then direct them fairly precisely towards certain parts of, 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 yeah, of that's the right. urban... Okay, and earlier on we just saw uh, robotics deactivate yeah. uh, some improvised yeah, explosive with a, with devices. A, with yeah. EOD specialist, right? Ex- yeah. Explosive IED, ordinance disposal. Yeah. IED, yeah, IED, IED. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, so this is a uh, mind clearing. So we see increasingly the role of technology coming in to you know in urban warfare. Do we see a uh, certainly a rise in that? Oh, um, definitely, definitely. One of the things that, that, that is increasingly available is Blue Force, what, what we call Blue Force trackers, which basically uh, is, is, is a transponder system which allows your commanders to keep track of where exactly you are. One of the great problems in an urban environment like this is that your friend can be half a block away, but you don't really know where he or she is precisely because um, there are so many angles and so many That's rooms, right. and, and, and unfortunately, everything works by line of sight. Um, blue force tracking allows you to then figure out where everybody is. Which in a, is very, in like very a 3D important. space, right? Like and in 3D space, yeah. yes, if necessary. Um, um, then they've got a whole... St uh, nowadays, you've got fiber optics which allow you to look round the corner without actually mm -hmm. sticking your head out, mm -hmm. uh, which is always very good because when you stick your head out, that means you're exposed. Um, <laughs> That's but right. fiber optics allows you to just turn the thing round and, and, and on, a, on, a, on a TV monitor, you can then look and say, alright, I see three bad guys there. <laughs> okay, let's figure out how we're going to do with that. Mm. Um, right. So I think, well, that's mission accomplished for the Singapore Armed Forces. The tanks have come in as the last, uh, as the last leg of uh, the entire integrated force. And uh, yeah, uh, to, take up, to take you on, on the point you made earlier, Dr. Lu, uh, about um, the step up in technology, okay, that's the thing. That's the, the question I have is we have stepped up in the technology, but in terms of skill, in terms of uh, the strategic and the, and the tactical, are our you know our armed forces ready to take on urban warfare? Whether they are ready or not, um, I think it's something that they clearly have recognised they cannot run away from. Um, like I said earlier on, the globe the whole world is be basically becoming a huge urban environment That's right. um, um, and it's something you cannot run away from. Um, so whether the, whether, whether the technologies will help or hinder at the end of the day, my sense is um, it'll help up to a point, up to a point. I think in a sense these kinds of training, trainings, um, 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 scenarios, operations and scenarios are useful but only up to a point. Um, I think they tend to compress the time scale of events rather too, rather too conveniently. Um, I suspect what you're more likely to find is an urban, in, a, in an urban operation, it's going to take you significantly longer mm -hmm. to be able to declare, yes, mission, mission accomplished, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we've, we've located mm -hmm. the enemy, we've, we've destroyed him. It's going to be much more difficult than that. It's going to be very time consuming, it's going to be very laborious, it's going to be very, very manpower intensive. Mm -hmm. um, robotics... Not to mention psychological. Not to mention <laughs> psychological, yeah. Robotics, fiber optics, um, 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 blue force tracking, etc., etc., etc. These are things which will um, um, ameliorate some of the difficulties. Mm -hmm. It will mitigate uh, against the problems, but they will never take it away completely. Yeah. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, unless and until you can see through concrete like Superman could, mm -hmm. um, guess what? You're going to figure out whether that room has got somebody or not. And mm -hmm. for you to do that, you're going to have to walk very, very carefully and very... Uh, uh, skillfully? Uh, uh, skillfully <laughs> up to the point yeah. you don't want to be shot just in case there's somebody... Well, I, I think the new the new yeah. advanced combat man system which in the SAF sort of uh, just developed, I think that's uh, sort of like might help to mm -hmm. know soldiers into Superman. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can I don't know, take a look at the at that VT right now, the video. With the war moving from the jungle to the streets, our SAF soldiers need to be trained in urban operations. Brian is over Razi TV and I'm here at Murai Training Facility to see where the third generation SAF soldier is being trained. Let's take a look. Countries such as France and the United States of America have upgraded their infantry combat systems to meet the growing concerns of urban warfare. The Advanced Combat Man System, or ACMS, is the SAF's answer to truly bringing our third generation army into the future. In addition to the new pixelated camouflage army uniform, the ACMS is designed to provide significant situational awareness as well as raise survivability and lethality to our fighting troops. Okay, so maybe you can take me through your equipment. Uh, like, what is this, for example? Uh, this is uh, some, some sort of a PDA. Okay. Uh, it allows me to uh, 
send a message to uh, other commanders. Like an SMS? Yep. And it allows me to uh, plot, plot my location mm -hmm. uh, in the enclosed area okay. so that my commanders will know where I am exactly. It allows me to, from the scope, it allows me to see the map inside and allows me to navigate uh, better with it. Uh, and it can show all my peers' location through this so that I know where, where exactly they are. This two things work together, okay? For okay. example, this is the menu. Okay, I press the menu. Inside this scope, I can see what's the, the menu screen inside. Okay. So I, I just click all the uh, necessary buttons to plot where exactly I am. Then they, uh, my commanders will see me. Well, this this is a SAR 21, yeah. but it's outfitted with something newer. Yeah. It looks different than the old, than the old models. Well, what is different? Oh, this has the night vision. Night vision scope, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Um, and I heard this this new SAR 21 actually has the ability to fire around corners. So another camera to attach. Okay, and you can actually see it yep. in your heads up display. No, that's a monitor. Oh, the monitor is on the gun yeah. itself. Okay, okay. Okay, and uh, what's this little part over here? This is for me to uh, take image. Oh, so there's a camera on the gun itself? Yeah. So, so your, your your commander's uh, back in HQ I can take the image through the scope here. Okay. So whatever is in the scope, they will take down the image. So they know exactly what you're looking yeah, at and exactly what send, you're firing? Through the, through the image. So everything is connected to like a CPU on, on the back of back of you? So how heavy is this? Is it as heavy as like a, a signal back? Uh, About the same? About. The personal radio allows the soldier to connect and share information with other soldiers. A built-in GPS helps operations headquarters to track his location. The head-mounted display feeds maps, satellite images and remote sensor videos straight to the ACMS-equipped soldier. This allows better coordination of attack and to avoid fratricide. The SAR-21 rifle is upgraded with a weapon-mounted camera for capturing and sharing of target information, as well as around corner firing. The portable computer carried by the section commander processes data collected from all the sensors, GPS, and other ACMSs to provide real-time battlefield updates, improving the situational awareness of our soldiers and allowing smaller precision strike teams to be connected through a network. The communication keypad is ergonomically designed to interface with the portable computer system. Two features that are unique to the ACMS is a built-in short messaging system, as well as hotkey buttons for calling for a medic, and to request assistance from nearby forces, such as an area bombardment. Today we will see the improvement in the soldiers' capability to network with the wider systems of the SAF. That will give the soldiers the ability to fight, not as an individual, not even as a section of uh, seven men, but leveraging on the firepower, the sensor network on the wider SAF system that he has. So it's like pretty much of what we say. We want the soldiers to be in the third generation, operating like as if he's in a civilian world. If he dial one eight hundred, call a bomb, the rounds will land for him, and he doesn't have to carry everything on him personally. So this is the network that we want the soldiers to have. Survival for your soldiers and helping your soldiers is the most important, utmost important for me as a section commander. One of the very best functions that I find in the SMS is the call for medic. When when you actually uh, wounded in a in 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 wars or something like that, you will just shout your heart out, shout shout shout, and then people will just uh, come to your voice and go to your location. But with this system, uh, you actually there's a system where you actually call for medic, and the medic knows exactly where you are. The younger generation can multitask quite well, looking at the enemy and sending a text messages without even looking at his keypad. So these are some of the ways we leverage on the strength of the younger generation to design the kind of systems that we have for the NS men, rather than the other way around to say that I designed this and then now you go forth and learn to use it. Multitasking young generation, huh? Um, you can't over multitask. Uh, there is such a thing called information overload. Uh, um, um, Super Hornet F-A-18 fighter pilots have, have, have commented that um, in their cockpit, they have to deal with so many different things at the same time that after a while, they sort of every their brain begins to shut down and and, and, they, and they stop functioning effectively. Yeah. You can overload somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how much multitasking can can can, can yeah exa do? exactly? Which brings me to my next question. You know, we have stepped up. You know, not just Singapore. I mean, it's a worldwide phenomenon. The in, the, the the interest and the importance of urban warfare is on the rise. Everyone knows. Yeah, this is the way to go. But you know, stepping up in technology, all that isn't necessarily the best 
you know, the best counter. Like, let's say if someone comes in, you know, small groups come in and drop IEDs or come up with this, you know, RPG-7 and come and, you know, does your technology get you out of that sort of fix? No, the technology allows you to figure out where you are. It allows you to figure out where your buddies are. Basically, it allows you to um, 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 keep track of everybody. Right? It allows you to. It can. It, it can also begin to t to tell you where your opponents are. Um, now, hopefully, what that means is that um, all these things are being transmitted real time, mm -hmm. um, um, and, and it's not some guy shouting over a radio. I, I need air support. I need air support. I need air support. All these things are part of the data stream already, and because they're all being transmitted real time, hopefully, this means that um, um, a precision munition can arrive at the right place at the right time. It's kind of like Amazon.com. Um, just in time logistics, they call it nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yep. So these technologies basically uh, allow you to keep track of each other. You don't get lost, and and, and getting lost it has traditionally been one of the great problems of the military of, of any military operation. We call it the fog. We call it the fog of war, um, and things. You get lost. You can't see very clearly. And then the next F word begins to kicking, and that's friction, uh, where things begin to foul up. Um, um, situation normal. All, I can't say the last few words. Law, it's Murphy's law. law, right? <laughs> yes. um, hopefully, by being able to know where everybody is, at least you begin to reduce the, the probability yeah. of Murphy's law. Yeah. Um, let's be honest about this. Murphy's law will never go away. Yeah. Just at the right point in time where you really need your weapon, your weapon's going to jam up for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. The situation, as the military says, is FUBA, but we can't... Is it acronym, yes. but you can, you can yeah, find out what acronym is. is. <laughs> we won't tell you um, what it is. So, yeah. all these technologies really... Up allow you to minimize fog. Mm -hmm. They help and hopefully minimize friction um, so that you at least know what's going on. Yeah. But I, IEDs and, and RPG-7s, they, they're not going to take that away. Yeah, yeah. It may it will help make it easier, but it does not really take away that, that you know, the threat that RPGs and IEDs and, you know, even in asymmetric warfare where people, small groups can come in and use weapons like that, you know, it can, it can, you know, take the edge of technology away because in an urban landscape, it's really different, right? They can use it to their advantage and all oh, that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, well, we know that in training, and Brian would be really <laughs> a testament to that, heavy weaponry involved, intensive physical strain, you know, when you're talking about being a military, yeah? Yeah, okay, I yeah. see that furrowed eyebrows. I know it's bad memories <laughs> again. But, but here's a look at how some soldiers cope. mooning over there. <laughs> you can say our boys in green don't have a sense of humour. But before we leave you, here's a razorism for the day by the military great Sun Tzu. Regard your soldiers as your children and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your own beloved sons and they will stand by you even unto death. Well, thank you, Dr. Lu, for joining us on the show today. That's right. And thank you for joining us tonight as well. We enjoyed being point blank with you. But don't go away though, because news is up next with Razor's Top 5. That's right. See you tomorrow. <laughs>